Hi everyone, this week we're testing the 2015 Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV. So this is Alfa Romeo's high performance hot hatch. Um, it's going up against vehicles like the Ford Focus ST and the Volkswagen Golf GTI. It comes with its own uh, styling tweaks such as the rear spoiler at the back, uh, neat little side skirts, and a set of 18 inch alloy wheels that hide multi-piston Brembo brakes. There's also a special little badge on the side and the dark grey side mirrors and door handles. Earlier this year the, uh, the 2015 model year update was introduced in Australia uh, bringing a dual clutch automatic transmission option before this was only available with a, with a six speed manual and also a new infotainment system inside. Under the bonnet is the same 1.75 litre turbocharged four cylinder engine uh, which produces 173 kilowatts with the manual transmission and 177 kilowatts with the new automatic. That's a pretty good output level for a, for a sort of 1.8 litre engine. Considering the two litre Volkswagen Golf GTI engine produces 160 odd kilowatts and then the Ford Focus ST's 2 litre produces 184. So I'll show you what it sounds like. So you've got a bit of a turbo whistle there and a, a distinctive uh, bassy soundtrack. And then when you're up and running on the road under a bit of load, there's sort of a, a gurgly induction noise. It sort of reminds us of the old Weber carburetors. So this is the new 6.5 inch touchscreen interface. Um, it's, a, it's a vast improvement over the, the thin little unit, which was very complicated and had poor graphics. Alfa Romeos have always been a bit interesting in terms of design. It's a, there's a bit of theater to the interior. You're not going to get bored as quick as you will in just a run of the mill hot hatchback. Some of the functionality is still a bit quirky. Um, the gear lever for instance, it's uh, very loose and sometimes you put it into D and it doesn't actually engage D. And same with reverse. And then you've got the uh, instrument cluster which has got the old graphics, the red and black graphics. Oh, I'm not sure you, sure you can see that. But yeah, it's very clunky and a bit confusing. There's also this little menu button on the side that takes you to a menu that's not really of any benefit. I mean, bu buzzer volume, all that just for the buzzer volume and then just a speed, speed warning as well. But yeah, it's, it, it's very basic. It seems like that's out of 1990, whereas that's out of 2015. So you've got full connectivity, you've got SD card reader and a USB. Um, and then beside that you've got this cool little DNA toggle switch which is just changes the, the driving mode. So you've got dynamic, neutral and all weather. Um, each of those just change the steering sensitivity and the throttle response. It's not as practical in here as some of the rivals. Um, for instance, there's nowhere really to put your phone, there's just these two little cup holders, I'm not sure if you can see those, but yeah, it's it's hard to um, put your things, there's a little cubby hole up the top that you can put your phone in, but it's, it's a bit of a bit of a reach, um, but it just seems like there's a lot of a lot of space that could be used, but it's, it's not being used. There's quite a few hard plastic materials used as well, um, the top of the dash has sort of got a soft rubbery surface. The seats are quite good, they've got this sort of Alcantara section in the middle, so it's not as not as hot and sticky in the in the hot weather. They provide good good support both laterally and on the bottom cushioning. So I'll have a look at the back seats. So when you first look in it it does look pretty tight compared with a golf or a focus ST. Um, these seats, they look huge and, and comfy and cushy, like a big 
big futon, but then when you actually sit on them, they're, they're not as supportive as, as they look. Um, Legroom is okay, I've got this seat sort of more forward than the average height person. That's sort of more in line with how most people would sit and there's, there's not heaps of room there. Headroom also is, is quite limited. My head is, or my hair is touching the roof. But it's a pretty good atmosphere in here. It feels quite sporty and racy, especially with these uh, racing harness slots in the seats. And then you've got dual sunroofs as well. Only the front one opens right up. Then boot space is about average for the segment. It's not too low, then you've got a space saver spare underneath. Let's take this baby for a drive and see how it goes. In neutral mode, it's just behaving like a normal automatic hatch. Changes up gears quite soon um, to save fuel, even sometimes a bit too soon. And the steering is just light and easy. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's that gurgling sound that we were talking about before, just on the intake noise. So it's exactly like a uh, Weber carburetor. in dynamic mode blipping on the down changes As you can hear, you do get that um, that burble between gear shifts or up shifts, like a Volkswagen. It's got plenty of torque, plenty of low down pull. Bit of tug at the steering wheel, bit of torque steer. There's no denying it's, it's speed. So the main problem with this car, in my opinion, is just the competition. You've got some very fierce rivals and very capable rivals as well. The Focus ST and the G Golf GTI and even the Renault Megane RS. I mean, if you're an avid Alfa Romeo fan, um, you'll love this car. It's got the excitement, it's got the pizzazz that the brand has always had. Um, gives off a throaty soundtrack, goes really good. It's got a bit of turbo lag, which adds, adds to the excitement. And it's got the funky interior that you're not going to get tired of anytime soon. I guess the main question for me is, does it perform? sure how that translates on video but uh, certainly gets my heart going now, overall this is a it's an exciting hot hatch um, if you're after something that looks good it looks different to the rest of them inside and out this is the car for you to me it doesn't feel as complete or as dynamic as some of the leading rivals 
Um, just in terms of suspension, the back is a, sometimes a bit bouncy, um, and then the engine's got turbo lag and things like that. It's it's not a it's not a major deal deal breaker or anything like that. But it's just when you're comparing it against another car, if you just stepped out of, uh, as we said, a Golf GTI or a Focus ST, then your um, these little issues will be be amplified. Thanks for watching once again. Don't forget to leave some comments below and uh, tell us what you think or if you've got any suggestions, do let us know.